Okay, ma'am. Uh, good morning to one and all who are here. Hi, Dr. Vijay. I welcome you all to the day four session of PH Group. So today's topic is aging arthritis, and our speaker is Dr. P. Ratan Kumar. He has masters uh, in musculoskeletal sciences and sports condition. He is working as an assistant professor and a head of department of head of department of musculoskeletal sciences at Charuset. Talking about his academic background, he has uh, done his BGD and MPT from RGUHS Bangalore, and currently he is pursuing PhD from Charuset. Now, about his experiences, so he has uh, he has experience of 15 plus years in teaching, and he has 13 plus years of experience in research. He has guided various PG and UG students for their research work. Under him. Till now, 12 uh, projects have been completed for PG students and two are ongoing. And uh, 20 uh, students have completed their UG, uh, UG projects and two are ongoing. He has published 20 articles related to musculoskeletal sciences and sports sciences. He has uh, published 14 papers in national and international conferences. And he has been a resource person at more than 10 uh, workshop, seminar, and webinars. He has secured five best paper awards in various conferences. He has also served as an on-field physiotherapist in more than 10 state and national level tournaments. His research area is functioning issues, sports injuries, and ICF. Apart from such a vast experience in academic aspects, he, has, uh, he is a down-to-earth person. You will have a great experience with learning uh, of a learning with him. So, not taking more time, over to you, sir. Thank you, ma'am, for your uh, introduction, which is more than uh, my level. Okay. Uh, let me just share my slide. Okay, is it visible, ma'am? Yes, sir, visible. All right. Uh, good morning, candidates. Uh, I, I think many of you have already sent me during the admission process, those who have already enrolled in the study. Uh, uh, today, I'll be speaking about one of the common conditions which is encountered by the physiotherapist, that is osteoarthritis. Uh, it is uh, given a vital as aging because this condition is very profound among the aging population and very rarely we should see in the younger population. Some authors also, you know, mention this condition as a, all as arthritis. So whatever I'll be delivering today, it will be based on the Osteoarthritis Research Society International, which is based on the Australia and the Netherlands. I'll start my presentation with one simple question. Is osteoarthritis is a serious disease or not? So this particular uh, research society, they already proved that, they have already mentioned that, yes, osteoarthritis is one of the serious diseases. Okay, so let us see how it goes on. If I have to go by definition, it is one of the degenerative condition. Uh, non-inflammatory joint disease characterized by destruction of articular cartilage and formation of new bone at the surface and the margin of the joint. As you can see in the image of left side, uh, this, this is a normal joint of our knee. And you can see the thinness of the joint surface. On the right hand image, you can see it's an image of osteoarthritis of knee joint. The surface become irregular, Away, okay, and you can see the new bone formation in the joint as well as nearby area. Okay, so ultimately it affects whole integrity of the joint and affect normal functioning. That will be seen in the type of. OA is uh, one of the common and going growing problem globally. Okay, it is not a problem affected only in the Indian, Asian or subcontinental. It is a problem for worldwide. It affects uh, around 24 million uh, 
people worldwide. So it's, this number is not a small number, it's a huge number, okay? <clears throat> and this number is growing. Every year, this number is increasing. Uh, India, fortunately, we have a younger generation, or India is the youngest uh, country. Even though we have a younger age, the prevalence of the numbers of people with the problem of the osteoarthritis is growing even in India, not only uh, Asian and globally. Uh, if you see gender-wise, female have two times more prevalent than the male. Okay, there are various factors are there why female are having more uh, chances to like hormonal and body weight and wider family. Many factors are there, but when it compiled together, female have two times more incidence or more common uh, when it compared to the male population. What are the joints it affected? It is it affect many joints. Uh, it affect the joints of spines like neck or lower back, okay? So neck, we have uh, seven joints are there. Cervical, if you, when you come to the anatomy classes, you come to know the terminology. So I'll try to use a lesser terminology because you have not introduced to that, okay? So neck and the lower back joints of the spines are affected. It affects the fingers and the wrist area. It affects the hip joint, knee joint, and two cells. Okay. Uh, if I have to tell the percentage of uh, this frequency, then uh, spine they account for a more number of frequency, seventy five percent. But most time they used to be silent. They silent in the sense uh, when it become a delay, the time only they they are uh, come in diagnosis. Hen is also uh, not so less. It account of sixty percent. And it always lands up with a severe irreversible deformity, which is which prevents the life flow. Hip and knee, these two are the joints which are involved in the weight bearing, or weight bearing in a sense, whenever we are in the standing, walking, running, stair activity, in all form of uh, upright activity, these two joints always involved as a weight bearing joints. So hip and knee, if you see, knee joint has got more percentage it becomes 30%, and both the joints will give a very disabling, okay, very disabling in the affected individual. So here what we see is it does not affect the shoulder joint and it does not affect, affect the thoracic joints or the joints in the chest regions, okay. And this is the uniqueness about this condition. Some other arthritic conditions are there, which typically affect the shoulder and the spine. This is one of the uniqueness. It does not affect shoulder and thoracic region. <clears throat> yeah, I'd like to mention one more additional point. The age of diagnosis of this condition, earlier it was known to be uh, 45 and above. But in the recent decades, we, it's been observed that the age of diagnosis has been shifted in the early ages. And nowadays we could see the arthritic changes even in the 30s also. This is supposed to be, which is a very profound among the 40s in the earlier decades. So this age of diagnosis is shifted in the earlier. This is again more problematic for India. I have, as I have mentioned, Indian overall population is a young population. So this shifting of age towards the younger generation or younger age group, again further pushed up the prevalence in the India itself. Uh, OA limits life participation in a many different way. Around 20%, 25% of them cannot do a normal activity. So when I say normal activity, uh, for us, just for a lower limb or a leg, walking, then going to some distance, going to religious area, then stair activity, or doing some household activity. A small, small activity is around 25% of them cannot complete because of uh, osteoarthritis. Around 80% are limited with the movement. So it is again a big challenge. Many of our activity in the life or day-to-day -day life, we require full range of motion or else full movement of the joint. When the joints are not moved to the range what they are supposed to be, it start limiting the you know activity. And eventually it land up in increasing risk of cardiovascular diseases, diabetes, hypertension, and sometimes even it may lead to death. 
okay so this limiting the dead or sorry increasing the dead is not because of osteoarthritis but it's a consequence of osteoarthritis like i have mentioned they'll be limiting their activity and they'll be limiting their movement so because of that ultimately they are they all forced to go to the sedentary lifestyle and because of sedentary and uh, non-functioning other risk factors are uh, pushed up and they may die in the early age because of this uh, consequence of cardiovascular and other systemic involvement. Okay, it's not directly because of joint trauma. I'll try to list out some of the common problems encountered by the uh, knee osteoarthritis. Uh, I, these are the complaints, common complaints which I'm listing out, but not limited to. Okay. Uh, Problems or complaints will be keep on differing based on the particular individual, how they live their lifestyle, how, what are the occupation they are doing, and many factors. So many factors will influence in changing the problem. But here I am listing out some of the common problem which may be encountered by most of the uh, individual in India. Okay, uh, again, functional problems or problem difficulty after the knee OA might be differ country to country or region to region also. And even some cultural beliefs or cultural practice also may lead to differing in this problem. Okay. Uh, prolonged sitting and prolonged standing. This is uh, one of the big challenge for many of them. Like uh, people who are working in the office or bank uh, where they need to sit for a longer duration. Okay, for them, it is a big problem. They cannot sustain for a longer duration. Now, I have already mentioned that the age of diagnosis is 30s and 40s. This is a peak time people will be involving in the job or other uh, activity, activity for early. Okay. So if they start the diagnosing in the early age, and it may even affect in their job also. Prolonged standing. So occupation like uh, watchmen, then traffic police, okay, even a teacher who stand for, you know, one hour, two hours in the classroom to teach, okay? And a housewife, housewife who used to cook in the kitchen for uh, hours and hours up with the prolonged standing, okay? So those become a big problem for them. Sit to stand, either getting up from the chair, getting up from the sofa or car sits, or any time sitting down or sitting, getting up, it become a big problem for them. Uh, this next problem is very typical to Indian, sitting in the Indian toilets. If someone is using the Western toilets, this problem may not be there. But most of India, India is dominated by rural area. So still now, uh, toilet system is one of the big problem in the India. So still people use the Indian setup of toilet, they will have problem in sitting down and even getting out from the uh, toileting position. Walking is again a big problem for all the population who affect the knee joint with the osteoarthritis. Their yeah, walking can be of varieties. It may be a short distance, long distance, walking in the uneven surface, or walking in the uphill, downhill, okay? Any form of walking, they'll have problem, okay? It may be in varieties, walking with carrying a weight or without weight. So all form of walking will be problematic for them. Next, coming to the another problem is stair activities. Either going up the stairs or getting down the stairs. This also becomes another problem for many of them. Okay, cross leg sitting. This complaint is again specific to the Indian or Asian population. This complaint may not be there for uh, American or European population because they don't uh, practice cross leg sitting. So in India, for many uh, our religious practice or ritual, or uh, even for our dining habit, many of us still you know prefer to sit down on the floor in a cross leg sitting to have lunch or dinner or breakfast. So if someone having an osteoarthritis of the knee joint or hip joint, they will still have problems sitting or maintaining the cross leg sitting or any other reason. Self care, self care related to the knee, like a dressing, then bathing. Okay, uh, this all also become another problem for them. And household activity. So this household activity will be slightly different uh, among the genders. So in India, we have a different set of, you know, household activities performed by the female and performed by the male. 
Okay, so based on the gender difference, uh, variation in the gender, their complaint might, might be slightly different, but overall, they'll have problem in the household activity, like pushing the, you know, pushing the box or pushing the uh, cartoon or, or anything, moving something or else cleaning the household. Okay, so household related activity also become an, a big problem for them. And uh, attending religious activity, most of our, our temples and other things need to be a client. Okay, stay uh, already a part of many of our temples. So unable to work, unable to climb, and unable to maintain. Yeah, in the in the temple we don't have a chair or other sitting facilities. We are supposed to go to the either in the kneel down or cross legs. So these are already problematic because of this many reason. Attending religious activity or ritual functions become another problematic. And as I have mentioned, this is affected in the little bit elderly one. So elderly are the one who are very much active or frequently participate in the religious activity. And that turned out to be a, another problem for them. So as I mentioned, these are not limited, but these are some of the common problems encountered by uh, people with a knee osteoarthritis. Apart from this, like driving the vehicle, okay, then using the public transport, then going for shopping, right? So many other might be a problem for them that may or may not be because again, it will differ individual to individual, all right? So when someone already develops osteoarthritis, they feel that their joints are completely stiff and they feel helplessness. They, they feel that uh, I need something to come out from this situation. They feel that my life is ending because of my knee joint. I cannot do anything. So frequently it is becoming stiff and I cannot do many activity because of this problem. So it not only the joints, it also hurt their mental and psychological status. Whether this condition has any cure, this is another question. Okay. Uh, based on the research society, they, they already uh, stated that there is no cure for this condition. Uh, we have different professionals who involved in you know, treatment of this condition, like allopathic, Ayurvedic, and uh, physio, occupational therapists, many professionals involved in dealing or treating or managing the condition. But uh, till now, there is no single you know, profession or intervention who can cure the condition. Okay. But if someone is getting treatment, you may, you may be wonder if it is not going to cure, then why we need to invest time in understanding or treating this condition? We might be involved in treat, uh, their treatment to reduce their symptoms. Okay to reduce their symptoms and improve their function. So there is no approved drugs to prevent this condition. The so people may generally ask that, is there anything which I can take to reduce this condition or prevent from this condition? No, there is no drugs, approved drugs, which can, uh, which can prevent the condition, okay? Or meanwhile, there is also no drugs which can slow down the disease process. And for your information, let me remind you, this is one of the irreversible conditions. Irreversible in the sense, whatever damage takes place in the articular cartilage, it cannot be regenerated. Whatever damage, it becomes permanent damage and it will be keep on expanding the damage. Okay, so the condition is progressive and irreversible. And it will not stay in the single stage and it will keep on worsening day after day, day after day. And there is no reverse to it. Okay, that is what we used to call irreversible. And we don't have any drugs or medicines or any intervention to slow down the disease process, okay? On the other hand, surgery can be one option to replace the joint, okay? Whatever surface, articular surface damage or joint destruction takes place, the ultimate uh, management would be replacing a joint with the artificial uh, implants. Okay, that is the last option, but uh, replacing the joint will not restore the normal or natural joint. So uh, it may reduce the symptoms of like, uh, or worsening of the problem, but it does not give full restoration of normal joint. Here comes the requirement of rehabilitation, okay? 
So when we don't have a absolute treatment for this condition, what we can manage for them is get, get them moving towards the world of mobility and joint. So they have problem with the mobility, they have problem with the function. So think of something to improve their mobility so that they can live with a joyful life. Okay, so that is that become another way of uh, handling or managing this condition. Before that, let us see, before we see the you know, uh, type of management, let us see some of the risk factors. So risk factors can be generally split into two forms, which are modifiable and non-modifiable. So modifiable risk factors are there which healthcare professional can help or intervene to reduce those risk factors and help in preventing or minimizing the disease situation. But uh, on the other hand, uh, non-modifiable non -modifiable risk factors such as age, we cannot reduce or you know or minus in the age. Age cannot be changed. Gender we cannot be changed. Okay, so this becomes a non-modifiable risk factors. Joint structure, joint structure, the structure itself we cannot modify. But if we modify some other parameters, it may you know prevent the changes which are coming to the uh, joint structure. Or else, if someone already had a injury or fractures around the joint or with respect to joint structure, that may also become another risk factor. Just say, uh, because of road traffic accident, uh, maybe just two years before around the knee joint, which affect or which crack around the joint surface, eventually, uh, maybe after two years or five years of time, they'll surely develop osteoarthritis. So that kind of arthritis is the term as a secondary, which has a known cause or which has a previous injury, and as a consequence, developing osteoarthritis in the latter part of the age, that kind of osteoarthritis we term as a secondary osteoarthritis. And the one which developed by itself without any unknown cause or without any unknown culprit, those kind of osteoarthritis we term as a primary osteoarthritis, okay? Mm -hmm. Weight, overweight or excessive body weight or obesity become uh, one of the big risk factors. Because if we increase, the if someone has a you know excessive body weight, it give extra pressure to the joint and it helps in quick wear and tear of the joint surface. So if you're planning to minimize or slow down the disease process, managing the body weight will become another key point in this condition. Occupation become another risk factor. As I have discussed earlier, people who are involved in a prolonged standing or uh, you know, prolonged sitting position, they become a little bit of uh, risky to develop this one. Okay, and those professions like athletes who have uh, lifestyle of, I mean, uh, in their training, they have uh, intention to provide high impact in the joint. Okay. So repeated impact, repeated high impact in the joint may eventually lead to a minor wear and tear, and as a you know slow process in the later part of the year, it may convert into osteoarthritis. Also, it is also believed that uh, those who have a family history of osteoarthritis they also become a risk factor, and this is still controversial, but it is already listed by some experts. Bleeding problems. This is some uh, uh, physiological phenomenon which will be coming in the later part of the US semester. So those who have a bleeding disorders or bleeding problem, they also may have risk factors to reach this condition. Other arthritic conditions like gouty arthritis, pseudoarthritis, and infectious arthritis, because of that, it also become a consequence to develop osteoarthritis. Certain conditions like uh, taking a steroids or taking uh, uh, extra uh, other treatment related to the joints that also may become risk factors. So these many are the common risk factors. So if you can reduce these risk factors, especially the modifiable one, I'm not talking about a non-modifiable, you cannot change, like family history, you cannot change, sex, you cannot change, gender or age, you cannot change. So whatever we cannot change, we no need to think about that. It will be keep on happening. But the other modifiable factors, if you work on that, 
even for the people who have not yet diagnosed for the condition, it may either delay or it may prevent from getting you know this condition. Some of the prevention strategies, because we know the risk factors. If you know the risk factors, if you can reduce it, then it become a preventive strategy. So according to the experts, everyone should receive education of active lifestyle and exercise regularly and manage their weight. So this is a simple way of you know, preventing strategies. So preventing strategies can be applied to the people who have not yet diagnosed with a condition. Like just say, you all fall under the 20s. So none of you have diagnosed with this condition. So for you, if you, um, if you receive a proper education about the condition, and if you maintain an active lifestyle and uh, performing regular exercise to maintain your body weight, you may prevent your, you know, uh, prevent from this condition to some extent. This is what expert suggest that. One, uh, one of the prime minister, British prime minister, he has nicely said about the exercise. Those who think they have no time for bodily exercise will sooner or later have to find time for illness. It means we need time. We need to spend some time for ourselves to do exercise so that we don't have to take out extra time whenever we are. Eating. Okay. When it comes to the management, the condition can be managed differently. It can be managed with a pharmacological intervention. It can be managed with a physiotherapy intervention. And finally, physiotherapy and pharmacology, both the form of management comes from the conservative form of management. When the conservative management fails to restore the joint function or to maintain the functionality of the individual, eventually or ultimately, the one has to replace the joint with a surgical procedure. So we have three options, currently going pharmacology and exercises or physiotherapy, or else pharmacology alone or exercise alone. Okay, these two comes under the conservative. And it may have to use for a longer duration. If the person detected or get the condition in the early age, they, have, they may have to live with the condition with a longer duration. Okay, and surgeries are advised, especially when the person is 60s and 70s not before that, because the available implant in the market, their lifestyle, the lifespan is almost 12 to 15 years. If someone replaces the joint in the 45 years, then the life of the implant will last up to their 60s. So even the surgeon will try to delay the surgery so that the life of the implant can be a little bit, you know, uh, push on the later part of the life. So eventually, when the conservative fail to give the result, the ultimate management will be replacement of the joint. Even after that, the replacement of the joint, the individual will require rehabilitation. There also, the role of physio will be again uh, coming up. In short, physiotherapy play a role either uh, pre-surgery or post-surgery. And Pre-surgery, it is already proven that it also helps them slow down the disease process or else delaying the requirement of uh, surgical intervention. It was already documented. How can OA patient benefit from physiotherapists? This may be a simple question you might like to ask. Okay, so physio will help in reducing their pain, improving their function of day-to-day -day life, and ultimately improving their quality of life, okay? As I have already mentioned earlier, none of the profession can change the disease process, okay? Either you take a pharmacology, physiotherapy, or a, a surgical procedure or intervention, none of the treatment intervention can change the disease process or it can cure it, okay? So here, physio play a vital role in reducing their pain, improving function, and ultimately give them a good quality of life. One of the key components in the prevention, what I have mentioned earlier also, okay? So why is, what should be the objective for our patient education? So our objectives should be to improve the knowledge of the patient related to the disease, okay? And make them part of decision-making. 
right? Uh, earlier, the healthcare management system is very much one-sided. Only the healthcare management personnel, they decide what to do and what not to do. Never involves the patient side or other stakeholder. So this is the you know, phenomenal change. So it's not only the decision from the healthcare uh, professional, even the stakeholders like patient and their caregivers, we need to involve them in planning the management strategies. Okay, so this is the main objective. So the content, whatever, whenever you are going for patient education, basic content one you should be having is about the disease and its consequences. What is the disease? What is the procedure? How it affect the joints and other activity? And, and its related consequence if it is not treated. Okay, and what are the treatment options available and their outcome measures? So treatment options, like I have mentioned, medical or pharmacological treatment and physiotherapy treatment, either with the individual or combination. Okay, and what type of outcome of those treatment should be expected? This should be the content of uh, our patient education. Road of administration or how do we educate? Okay, it can be a discussion with a healthcare profession. You may have a one-to-one -one discussion with the patient to give the above content. It can be a group dis discussion. You may go to one of the society and you may you know, group up those people who have osteoarthritis. You may give the same information in the group of people or self-review materials. Like you may give them a booklet or you may give them a website or other uh, electronic content to you know, refer by themselves. So these are some of the possible rules which you may use to give patient education. Uh, even the experts, they have already commented, even in the prevention strategy or even in the management, exercise become a key component, okay? So to prevent, to delay the disease or delay the disability. So some of the common type of exercise, what normally we are going to do will be uh, to provide stretching or to improve the flexibility to the muscles or joints uh, where there is limited uh, flexibilities are there. Okay, then strengthening of the weak muscles. Uh, I will not name the muscles because if I name also, you will be not knowing right now. So this are the form of exercise we may be performing. Strengthening exercises for weak muscles, aerobic exercises. This is again targeting not only in the joints, it is also targeting to reduce the risk of cardiovascular diseases. Okay, we have already known earlier that they affect not only in the joint, they make consequence with the cardiovascular uh, situation. So aerobic form of exercise without hurting the joint or without uh, affecting the joint that become a key component, not only uh, reduce the weight, they also help in maintaining or improving the cardiovascular system and reducing the consequence related to the cardiovascular system. And finally, we will be uh, having another type that is functional training. So this functional training will be uh, very much customized. Every individual, they might be performing different functions of their knee or their leg based on their occupation, lifestyle, and uh, uh, you know, geographical status. So functional training is also another key component of type of exercise which will be completely customized based on their needs or requirements. Uh, some example aerobic exercise I am giving here, uh, people can go for cycling, may go for swimming and walking. Swimming become one of the good exercise because it does not give any extra you know, load or weight in the joint. So meanwhile, it can even achieve the benefit of aerobic effect or even use for strength training and eventually reduce the symptom and reduce the body weight. So swimming or any form of aerobic exercise are very much helpful in slow down the disease process of this condition. Hydrotherapy. Hydrotherapy is again popular, uh, not in India because we have a very much lack of infrastructure. But if you practice in the European or American country or Western countries, they have very good establishment of hydrotherapy or they have that infrastructure. So this hydrotherapy or uh, hydro in the, means water or therapy means treatment. So treatment inside the water, okay. They have proved to be effective in relieving pain, improving joint movement and 
function of overall body and ultimately leads to improved quality of life of the individual. Planning for painless working. Uh, when we see the list of problems what they encounter, we found that uh, walking become one of the big problems for them. Okay. So improving walking pattern also can be one of the factors which can slow down the disease problem. If the person is walking or keep mobile, uh, it may again help in maintaining not only the joint structure, it also help in maintaining the cardiovascular system. Okay. Uh, it may require whenever we are going for a walking training, sometimes some of them might require orthosis or bracing or tapping or correction of the uh, footwear or some of the walking apps. Okay. Whatever is necessary, we may provide them, but ultimately make them work with or without this uh, walking edge or accessories. Some of the common orthosis you may see in the picture, okay, and all of them will not be, you know, uh, advisable for everyone in general, based on the need or based on the customization, the different varieties of orthosis or knee bracing may be required, okay. They are good for providing assistance to reduce the pain and improve the function of the knee joint. Material or tapping uh, with use of elastic material to, uh, you know, to apply in a, around the joint. And the objective for this application is to reduce the pain, keep the joint into proper alignment, and eventually to improve the function of the particular joint. Footwear or insole. Okay, some of you might have seen that people have more distance between the knee joints. So those we used to call as a bow leg. Okay, and so you might find some of the people who who have collision or, or no space between the between the knee. Okay, those people we use the term as a uh, no knee. Okay, so both are uh, considered to be changes in the alignment of the knee joint. So having either with the lateral wedging in in terms of bow leg or medial wedging in terms of no knee helps in aligning the joint. Um, it proves to be improved the symptom and even slowing down the disease process, okay? So if the condition is there, surely they might end up to either with a bow leg or no. This is one of the deformity commonly seen in the uh, OAD. Uh, no knee might be more frequent among the female and bow leg might be more frequent with the male population. But in both the way, uh, correction in the footwear or insole become a key component in changing the disease process and even slowing down the disease process. Insole, insole uh, another benefit for insole is it reduces the ground reaction force. Whenever we put weight on the ground, the impact coming back to the foot, it reduces, okay? It acts as a soft absorber and again, helping in slowing down the disease process. Varieties of walking ads are available in the markets, okay? People may choose based on the uh, their convenience, their uh, capacity or their needs, okay? But eventually these working, working aids are designed to reduce stress in the joint and improve stability while walking, okay? So the people who are in a very you know, severe situation, they may end up in a wheelchair also or even in the walker. So somewhere in the beginning or mid phase, they might be suitable with a cane. In the cane also you can see uh, with a single uh, padding and a tripod and quadruple, different options will come. Sir. So based on your requirement, I mean the individual's requirement, we can advise them, we can prescribe them to choose any of walking ads. And some of the challenges will come, people may not be comfortable with the walking ads considering the cosmetic purpose. They may not feel like carrying the walking ads. Okay, so you may have to convince them between the cosmetic and the functional improvement or stability of the body. Okay, so if they use, they will get stability, but on the other hand, they may not be liking considering the cosmetic way. We also, physio also can use some of the electro modalities to reduce pain, especially. So ultrasound, IFT, short wave diatomy, laser therapy, and pain. These are some of the common modalities that can be used in the management of knee osteoarthritis. Individual modalities will be studying in the uh, second years. 
some menin therapy techniques are also there. These are especially designed to relieve the symptom and improve the function. But unfortunately, these all techniques helps in a short term. They don't last for a long duration. So if you are expecting a short term relief in a symptom and improve in a function, you can always choose some of the appropriate menin therapy also. Okay. So we have studied, we have seen what is osteoarthritis, what are the risk factors, what are the problems they encounter. And we started with the uh, question and we have also seen that what are the options of management we have, okay, and what physio can do and what physios are going to do. What are the type of exercise physios are going to do and ultimately what are the subtypes that we have already seen. So again, I'm winding up with the same question. Yes, osteoarthritis is a serious condition, but we can maintain it by the help of physiotherapy or other treatment options from the pharmacology. And eventually, it can delay the disease process to get uh, into the requirement of surgery. Thanks for listening. If you have any query, you can ask now. If anyone have any query, you can ask me now. Please turn on your camera, everyone. If you are having any query regarding what is uh, sir have explained in that if you have don't understand anything you can ask sir have you seen anyone around you or in your society or nearby you or your sir, in chat box one student have asked that sir if any proper medication are in just a minute huh? Well, if any proper medication are not there, what type of prescription are given to the patient? Nice question. Medication, especially the medication used for osteoarthritis, mainly they are uh, analgesic and anti-inflammatory. Okay. So this is just to control the symptom, like uh, you can say to, to suppress the pain and suppress the inflammation. That becomes very temporary. Once they, they you know, uh, finish the doses of medication, again, the same pain may come back. To some extent, some surgeon may advise for steroids, okay, which will give a little bit longer pain relief, maybe for just a six month. But once the effect of medication goes down, again, the similar problem will come back. So as of now, analgesic or NSIDS or pain relief or anti-inflammatory, okay, to some other supplements also they may advise like calcium and zinc just to maintain the bone health, okay? So as a part of medication, these are the side medication. None of these medications are for curative. They all are for symptomatic uh, medication. So for once again, that's a student asked that. So generally they work as a painkiller? Yes, drugs? yes. Yes, analysis is painkiller. And I'll just say it's a scientific term and painkiller is a layman term. Okay, any questions from other students? Have you seen any one of, uh, any, uh, any one of you, have you seen any people with osteoarthritis of knee joint in and around you? Maybe your relatives or your, you know, in your society, anyone? No. Yes, one student said her mom, Princey Patel, her mother is having. Okay, so Princey, can you just tell us what problem your mother has when she has an osteoarthritis of knee? What are the problems she encounters in day-to-day -day life? Princey, you can unmute yourself and you can talk. So actually she has pain and she's like uh, not able to walk regularly, like more like far, 
when she is hmm. walking more she already has that pain okay yes regularly so, she has that yeah so that that i have also covered in a problem common problem walking is a common problem so or walking for a short distance long distance or walking in the uneven surface or walking with shoes without shoes soft surface hard surface okay in any form of walking suddenly they may increase the pain so when you are not able to walk it become a big problem for the individual you can have difficulty going for shopping difficulty going for you know roaming around in the society or attending some function ritual okay in the many aspect it become challenging for them thanks prince for sharing your uh, your mother's complaint welcome sir anybody else any things if you want to ask before we wind up Okay. If you are not having any question, I think uh, we can wind up here. I think. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Explaining osteoarthritis in very simple way, and this will be helpful throughout your uh, physiotherapy uh, course. And today, once again, I have learned from sir. I was student uh, in MPT, and once again, I have learned very uh, good topic from sir. And Sir is the expert in musculoskeletal department, and you will learn from sir in BPTN if you are doing MPTO here also. And thank you so much, sir, for explaining this topic in very simple way. Uh, what is the experience from your side, student? If anyone want to share your experience, anyone, if you want to share, you can share. Okay. Okay. Interesting lecture. Udit Joshi has said in chat box. Okay. Thank you everyone for joining for PHPRO lesson. Uh, same time we will continue tomorrow. Have a nice day. You can leave. Thank you everyone. Bye.